Chapter 14 of The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Chapter 14 by and by when we got up we turned over the truck the gang had stole off the wreck and found boots and blankets and clothes and all sorts of other things and a lot of books and a spyglass and three boxes of cigars we had never been this rich before in neither of our lives the cigars was prime we laid off all afternoon in the woods talking and me reading books and having a general good time I told Jim all about what happened inside the wreck and at the ferry boat, and I said these kinds of things was adventures, but he said he didn't want no more adventures. He said that when I went in the Texas and he crawled back to get on the raft and found her gone, he nearly died, because he judged it was all up with him any way it could be fixed, for if he didn't get saved, he would get drowned, and if he did get saved, whoever saved him would send him back home so as to get the reward, and then Miss Watson would sell him south shore. Well, he was right. He was most always right. He had an uncommon level head for a nigger. I read considerable to Jim about kings and dukes and earls and such, and how gaudy they dressed, and how much style they put on, and called each other your majesty and your grace and your lordship, and so on, instead of mister. And Jim's eyes bugged out, and he was interested. He says, I didn't know there was so many on them. I ain't heard about none of them, scarcely but old King Solomon, unless you count them kings to send a pack of cards. How much do a king get? get i says why they get a thousand dollars a month if they want it they can have just as much as they want everything belongs to them ain't that gay and what they got to do huck they don't do nothing why how you talk they just sit around no is that so of course it is they just sit around except maybe when there's a war then they go to the war but other times they just lazy around or go hawking just hawking and sp Shh. Did you hear a noise? We skipped out and looked, but it weren't nothing but the flutter of a steamboat's wheel away down, coming around the point. So we come back. Yes, says I, and other times when things is dull, they fuss with the parliament, and if everybody don't go just so, he whacks their heads off, but mostly they hang around the harem. Round the which? Harem. What's the harem? The place where he keeps his wives. Don't you know about the harem? Solomon had one. He had about a million wives. Why, yes, that's so. I, I done forgot it. A harem's a boarding house, I reckon. Most likely they had rackety times in the nursery. And I reckon the wives quarrels considerable, and that creates the racket. Yet they say Solomon the wisest man that ever lived. I don't take no stock in that, because why? Would a wise man want to live in the midst of such a blim blamming all the time? No, deed he wouldn't. A wise man had taken and built a biler factory, and then he could shut down the biler factory when he want to rest. Well, but he was the wisest man anyway, because the widder she told me so her own self. I don't care what the widder say, he weren't no wise man nother. He had some of the dad fetchingest ways I ever see. Did you know about that child that he was going to chop in two? Yes, the widder told me all about it. Well, then, wasn't that the beatenest notion in the world? You just take and look at it a minute. There's the stump. There, that's one of the women. Here's you. That's the other one. I Solomon. And this year, Dollar Bill's the child. Both of you claims it. What does I do? Does I shin around amongst the neighbors and find out which of you the bill belongs to and hand it over to the right one all safe and sound the way that anybody that had any gumption would? No, I take and whack the bill in two and give half on it to you and the other half to the other woman. That's the way Solomon was going to do with the child. Now I want to ask you, what's the use in half a bill? Can't buy nothing with it. In what use is half a child? I wouldn't give a darn for a million of them. But hang it, Jim, you've clean missed the point. Blame it, you missed it by a thousand mile. 
Who, me? Go long. Don't talk to me about your pints. I reckon I know sense when I sees it, and there ain't no sense in such doings as that. Dispute won't bout half a child. Dispute bout a whole child. And the man that think he can settle a dispute bout a whole child with a half a child don't know enough to come in out the rain. Don't talk to me about Solomon, Huck. I knows him by the back. But I tell you, you don't get the point. Blame the point. I reckon I knows what I knows. And mind you, the real pine is down further. It's down deeper. It lays in the way Solomon was raised. You take a man that's got only one or two children. Is that man going to be wasteful of children? No, he ain't. He can't afford it. He knows how to value them. But you take a man that's got about five million children running around the house and it's different. He as soon chop a child in two as a cat. There's plenty more. A child or two more or less won't no consequence to Solomon. Dad fetch him. I never seen such a nigger. If he got a notion in his head once, there weren't no getting it out again. He was the most down on Solomon of any nigger I ever see. So I went to talking about other kings and let Solomon slide. I told about Louis XVI that got his head cut off in France long time ago, and about his little boy, the Dolphin, that would have been a king, but they took and shut him up in jail, and some say he died there. Poor little chap. But some says he got out and got away and come to America. That's good, but he'll be pretty lonesome. There ain't no kings here, is they, Huck? Nope. Then he can't get no situation. What he going to do? Well, I don't know. Some of them gets on the police, and some of them learns people how to talk French. Why, Huck, don't the French people talk the same way we does? No, Jim, you couldn't understand a word they said, not a single word. Well, now, I be ding busted. How did that come? I don't know, but it's so. I got some of their jabber out of a book. Suppose a man was to come to you and say, Polly vu Franzi, what would you think? I wouldn't think nothing. I'd take him bust him over the head, that is, if he weren't white. I wouldn't allow no nigger to call me that. Shucks, it ain't calling you anything. It's only saying, do you know how to talk French? Well, then, why couldn't he say it? Why, he is a saying it. That's a Frenchman's way of saying it. Well, it's a brain ridiculous way, and I don't want to hear no more about it. There ain't no sense in it. Looky here, Jim. Does a cat talk like we do? No, a cat don't. Well, does a cow? No, a cow don't nother. Does a cat talk like a cow, or a cow talk like a cat? No, they don't. It's natural and right for them to talk different from each other, ain't it? Course. And ain't it natural and right for a cat and a cow to talk different from us? Why, most surely it is. Well then, why ain't it natural and right for a Frenchman to talk different from us? You answer me that. Is a cat a man, Huck? No. Well, then there ain't no sense in a cat talking like a man. Is a cow a man, or is a cow a cat? No, she ain't either of them. Well, then, she ain't got no business to talk like either one or the other of them. Is a Frenchman a man? Yes. Well, then, Dad blame it, why don't he talk like a man? You answer me that. I see it weren't no use wasting words. You can't learn a nigga to argue, so I quit. End of chapter 14